to recording. Great. Let's jump right in. Allow me to share my screen because uh, tab. And if at any time you guys do not hear me or anything, please just say something, okay? It's important. Okay, we'll just click present. Present, present, good. Let's get this show on the road, people. So design thinking. So what in the world is design thinking? Design thinking is the process of creating new and innovative ideas and solving problems. It's human-centered at the core. What in the world does this mean? It essentially means that you do not build something then hope people will like it. No. You build it in collaboration with people. And why is this important? A lot of people have been known to build something nobody wants nobody will use or using their assumptions as fact when they are organized when they're looking at a problem and making assumptions about the problem or people facing the problem and then go in the corner and build something then when they finally do a big huge launch nobody wants what they're building why because they didn't bother to ask questions and that's a problem because you end up spending a lot of time and effort and money building something nobody will use we do not want that. A very huge important part of being a professional who knows what in the world they're doing is being able to get perspectives from the people who will be directly affected by whatever it is you're doing, okay, stakeholders. So design thinking is a process of asking the right questions, getting the right insights, building a prototype, going back to the people that you initially asked insights from and observing how they're using the thing then making changes. So it's an iterative process, okay? So when I say iterative, it means circular, okay? There is no end to it necessarily. You start building something, okay? You come up with a theory of, you know, you, you see a problem, you come up with a theory of what causes the problem, okay, or some of the issues surrounding the problem. You got to talk to people who you think are facing the problem, get the perspectives on it. Then you go and develop an initial solution, based on the perspectives that you got from the people, okay, then you present it to them, observe how they're using it, okay, and then change things up, go back to them. So it's a bit of a circular process, but let's go forward. So uh, we've, talked, we've talked about what design thinking is, yeah? So now, next. The goal of design thinking is getting a thorough understanding of the user. Why is this important, okay? Because when you're starting out, you may think that the people who will use your thing is one group of people, but at the end of it, the people using it is absolutely different, okay? Then it also helps you redefine problems and innovate new solutions. And design thinking helps you challenge existing assumptions. I'll give a very short story that is often told when we're doing a design thinking workshop. There's a group of people who went to a remote Kenyan tribe and realized that women are traveling five kilometers to go fetch water from a well, okay? And normally, obviously, they're going on foot, carry heavy jugs on their backs and blah, blah, right? So this very brilliant group of people thought, Oh my God, in this day and age, it is not right for women to travel that huge distance to go and fetch water, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to create a tap right in the doorstep, bring water to the village and voila, save the world. Sounds like a good idea, right? But it turns out nobody wanted to use the tap. It sounds like such a simple solution to such a huge problem, right? But nobody wants to use the tap. Why? Because when they actually eventually talk to the women, they realize that that five kilometer walk is therapy for them. It's an opportunity for them to interact with other women away from the male gaze. It's the one chance they have to have a girl's evening out without being sexually harassed, without tending to anyone else. It's literally an opportunity for them to just focus, hang out, do their thing. 
So when you bring a tap in the doorstep, suddenly they do not have that chance. So as a design thinking expert, your thing isn't to look at the problem and come up with solutions right off the bat. Your thing is look at the problem and examine it dim deeply. Then talk to the people that you think are facing the problem. Figure out what really is going on in there. What has been tried, what has worked, and what hasn't. Then based on whatever information you get, you create solutions that will solve that problem. If these people had talked to these women beforehand, they would realize the problem isn't necessarily the water. The problem is the sexual harassment going on in the community. Being able to reframe a problem to get into the core of what the thing is helps you build something people want, okay? It helps you from spending a lot of money digging a well and having the well poisoned because people don't want to use that water. They want to go on the walk. But if you provide in a community where women felt safer, then the well is a good option. But you don't start by building the well. You start by talking to the women. Okay. If there are any questions, guys, please just type in the chat box. We'll we'll talk to them. we'll address them uh, soon. So let's go to the next thing. Here are some of the things that design thinking helps you with. It reduces time required for successful execution. If you talk to the right people, get the right insight, ask them the same questions, the right questions, then it reduces the amount of time that is required to solve a problem. Okay. It also helps you save resource save on resources. Why? Because you do not focus on solving the wrong problem. You use the resources that are available to solve the actual problem that's existing. And you test early and you test cheaply, okay? Then increases buy-in from end users. What does this mean? If you collaborate, in this case, if you talk to the women, then you come up with a solution together, then it is more likely that they feel like they were part of the process and they take ownership of the process and the outcomes and the solution and everyone ends up happy. Then you're able to get fast feedback on what you're using because every single step of the process involves asking questions, gaining insight, making changes. You get feedback fast as you move forward instead of building something in your corner and hoping it's what people want or assuming it's what people want. Okay, then you get users who actually use the thing frequently. If you make something in your corner, then you launch it and you realize nobody wants what you're making, you end up wasting a lot of time and effort and money. Okay, so let's talk about the steps involved in design thinking. The very, very first step is empathizing with the user. Okay, so what is empathizing? Empathizing essentially means putting yourself in the shoes of the people that you think are facing the problem that you want to solve. So while one of the best ways to put yourself in the shoes is to live in the community for one, for a week or a level of time, and the other thing, if that note is not available for you, is just doing research work. Doing research work by talking to the people who are facing the problem you think you want to solve. The other thing is also talking to the people who have tried solving the problem that you want to solve. Figure out what has worked and what hasn't. So you don't go on making the same mistakes that other people have made and they're more than willing to freely share the lessons they've learned along the way with you and you saving yourself the trouble. Talk to the people facing the problem that you think you want to solve and talk to the people who have been working on solving those same problems, okay? So another way of doing this is when you're able to contact these people, find out more about their day-to-day -day experiences, okay? What is, just figure out how they go through life, okay? One of these ways, if you're able to live in the community or if it's a community or you believe it is, find out more about their day-to-day -day experiences through observing immerse yourself in the physical environment so you can gain a deeper personal understanding of this challenge empathy allows design thinkers to set aside their own assumptions about the world in order to gain the right insight so in their story i gave you it is very likely that these people just read about this women traveling five kilometers and suddenly just brought their drill to drill in the water yes 
But if they bother to just have conversations with these women, stay in that community for a while, perhaps even one day or two days, just travel the 5km with them, see what kind of conversations they're having. They will have gained the kind of insight that will tell them that these people don't need a well next to home first. What they need is a solution to the sexual harassment that they face or an alternative option to, to the whole girls evening out of the village type thing okay but the only way to find out is not from a desktop somewhere in a city view apartment it's to figure out get as close as possible to the problem itself okay the next step okay obviously empathy is a secret weapon and being able to understand and share those feelings is important, okay? The other thing I need you to know is that design thinking revolves around what works best for your users, okay? And understanding the pain points and motivations. We've talked about that, okay? Now, let's talk about defining this thing, okay? When you put together the information that is gathered to, during the empathy stage, in this case, for instance, when you're able to put together the information that you got when handling when talking to the women you know you will know as we've said uh it's not a water problem per se but it's a sexual harassment or patriarchy problem okay then you're able to analyze your observations and synthesize them in order to define the core problems at this stage you define a problem statement okay so what is a problem statement? A problem statement is something that goes along the lines of, a problem statement is something that goes along the lines of, this is the problem we're trying to solve. So how might we solve the problem of women having to travel long distances to, to get water into the village, okay? So, that, that may be your initial problem statement, okay? You want to solve the problem of women having to travel long distances. But once you're able to talk and observe and empathize with them, it changes. It changes to something like, how might we help women create safer environment within the village so they don't have to feel like they need to travel long distances to get water, okay? Or to get space or to get a safe space how might we create a safe environment within the village so that women do not okay so that's the kind of problem statement that you're able to create after that okay now let's talk about oh sorry so defining allows you to synthesize the information that you've gotten and coming up with the correct correct type of problem uh problem statement okay so frame and approach a problem differently to figure out a unique solution, okay? We've talked about how the problem could change before you talk to the people to after you talk to the people, okay? Now, this is a time to build a prototype, okay? So, first of all, I want to check how many people are with me because I feel like I'm talking, I'm talking, I'm talking. How many people are following? And are there any questions so far before we go to the prototyping? Okay. Those are a lot of hands. Are there any questions so far? Any questions so far? Michael, do you have a question? No, I don't. Michael, I just forgot to lower my hand. Okay, no problem. Good. So we can proceed? Let's. Okay. Ah, Luel, you've raised your hand. What's up? Luel? Luel Haggis? Okay. Ah, it's okay. It's okay, Luel. It's absolutely okay. Right? So let's talk about prototyping. Okay? So, uh, Prototyping is uh, using the insights that you've gained to create a fast version of the solution you think might work. But for you to create the fast version of a solution that works, remember it starts from the very first step. 
being able to ask the right questions, being able to empathize, then ask the right questions, then gain insight, then see, okay. So if the problem is not the water per se, right? The water may be part of the problem, but it's a symptom of the problem, right? The problem is safety within this specific community. Now, let us work on something. Let's create a project that perhaps could help the women feel safer, okay? So that changes things, okay? Prototype is a very fast version of a solution. And this very fast version has to have obvious correlation with the insight that is gained from the questions that you asked, okay? So you will produce a number of local scale down versions, okay, of a product or service with the features that you think will work, okay? These may be shared and tested within the team or smaller groups outside the team. The aim is to identify the best possible solution for each of the problems identified, okay? The solutions can be accepted, improved, re-examined, or rejected based on user experience, okay? So the thing is, you have to... You have to create several versions of what you think may work, present them to the users, get feedback, then you'll iterate. But the prototype is a very fast, basic, cheap version, okay? Desmond, you've raised your hand. Do you have any question? No, I, I was just concerned. I didn't see you mentioning step three. This one is step four. Oh, apolo apologies. Let me just confirm. Apologies, I skipped ahead, okay? Step three is ideating, okay? Ideating is where you generate ideas based on the insight that you've gained, what you think might work, okay? Observations that you have made, okay? So you've gone to this community or you've talked to these people, you've asked them questions, you've seen how they live their lives, you've seen if it's in a work situation, for example, you've seen how your users interact with your platform, for instance, if it's a platform or with the product or the service, you have watched them, you've done user testing, you've gotten on the phone call with some of them to figure out you know, what's happening. You've asked them to share their screen so you see how they're interacting with the thing, you know, or you've gone actually to face uh, the physical users as they're using the thing to just check and see how exactly they're using it, okay? Then the observations you've made, the questions and answers you've gotten using the, during the second stage, okay? Then you come up, bring it together, then start generating potential solutions, okay? You and your team can start identifying new solutions to the problem statement, explore alternative ways of viewing the problem, and the how might we questions, okay? So this is where you start generating ideas, and the ideas you're generating are based on the observations you've made, the questions you've asked, the insights you've gathered, all of that. Now is when you start brainstorming on solutions. You don't see a problem, then start brainstorming on solutions? No. You see a problem, Go talk to the people who are facing the problem or who are working to solve the same problem. Figure out what's going on there, okay? Then you come together for you and the team to ideate, to check out what's happening, okay? That's what's happening, okay? Then you start exploring what are some of the assumptions that we had, but what is the insight we got, okay? That's when you ideate. Then after ideation, that's when prototyping comes in, okay? And thank you for letting us know about this keep step three okay prototyping creating the fast version of the thing okay so prototyping is building a solution despite not being perfect a lot of people have waited to launch the super most perfect thing ever a lot of times it's not nice because you the more you try to perfect it the more time it takes the more the more time it takes the more resources it takes and at this point, you're still not sure you're building the right thing. You're building what you think might work based on the insight you've gotten. So the most basic version that works, you need to take it back to the people, okay? You prototype, you build it. It's not, it doesn't have to be perfect. You build it, get insight and feedback from them, and keep perfecting it as you go along, okay? That is what a prototype is, 
okay so now testing testing literally means going back to the users and saying okay you guys told me this and this and this okay we built this and we don't know how it's going to happen but what do you think okay or you just give it to them and see how it works if it's a platform it's a software it is see introduce it to your users see do they use it and how often you know if you can screen record check out how they're navigating the platform itself if it's a physical product see are they going back to buy more you will get so much more insight from observation than just asking questions obviously but asking questions can also be very important okay this is where you test the complete product or service using the best solutions identified using the prototyping phase okay this is the final stage however the results generated during the, the phase often is to redefine one or more problems or inform understanding of the users alterations and refinements could still be considered based on user experience and feedback testing allows you to find out how people feel about the product solution or service at hand okay ask for user feedback on your prototypes okay guys so again we said the design thinking process is iterative go through a loop of understanding creating and learning okay now guys what are some of the questions you have so far about anything regarding what we've talked about I need you guys to ask questions. Okay, maybe not questions, but insights you've gained from this. What is something new you've gained from this? Something you didn't know, but you now know. Do we include the users in the prototyping process? Yes, Deborah, okay. The prototyping is a process. So I don't want you guys to think about one process as being a standalone. Every process includes asking questions, getting feedback, and whatnot. Okay? And being able to do it with the assistance of the users is absolutely the best version of design thinking. I'll give you guys a really wild example. Uh, before I joined 10 Academy, I was running this online school okay and when we when we were creating our online learning platform one of the things that was very helpful is because we had a very large mailing list one of the things that was very helpful was just emailing one or two people like yo we're building something we don't know if it will work okay could you just you know this is what we have so far it's a bit of a shell but could you just give me around 10 to 15 minutes of your time okay then when they signed up to help us do the prototyping and the user testing thing what we will do is just get on a zoom call and uh, tell them this is the link click on it then you don't you, you don't guide them on what they're supposed to do you just observe how they interact okay which buttons do they click which buttons do they ignore how do they go through the flow of the page okay what makes sense what doesn't okay so that is part of prototyping while engaging the users you're developing it alongside the help with the users okay one of the other things with the platform was it was supposed to be accessible to people with visual and hearing disability okay so the other thing we do is get actual users with disability navigate the platform okay there was the physical version of it then there was the virtual version of it you want to see Okay, what is the sign up process involving and are they able to sign up easily? Okay, one of the things we realize is that the contrast on the platform was absolutely terrible. When you see someone putting their phone like this so that they can be able to see the screen well, it tells you there's something wrong with the contrast on the platform. We wouldn't be able to know that if it was just strictly virtual. Okay, so being able to bring in observation in that way helps us get very specific feedback that okay they're still struggling with the platform and the, and the usability of it that's something we can change okay and the other thing that can be very helpful when especially when you're using the user testing phase don't ask them you know how do you like this or what do you think about this no 
you present it to them and you tell them, I'm very insecure about this thing. I feel like there's something wrong. What do you think is wrong with this? Ask them to only give you bad news because human beings have a tendency of just saying, oh, I like it. It's nice because nobody wants to hurt your feelings when you're building something. Okay. So tell them, no, 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 no. I just want bad feedback. Okay. Just give me the worst news. What's the worst thing that's wrong with this thing that we're building? Could be a project, could be solutions. Give people the opportunity to poke your assumptions. Okay. If you don't give them that opportunity, they will want to fluff things over. They will want to lie to you so they don't hurt your feelings. The thing that could help is say, actually, you know, we just had someone to do this, but I'm not sure they're doing a good job, man. You know, could you just help me look through this, okay? When you put the blame on a third person, even the other third person is invisible or doesn't exist, you allow them, you give them permission to hurt your feelings, but tell you the truth without worrying about hurting your feelings. Those are some of the things that could help you gain the correct insight that would give you the information you specifically need, okay? Or else, if you're building something and you're just presenting it, people are more likely to tell you good news. But the good news may be correct, but it may not be the whole story. Some people tell you good news, but they still will not use your solution because it doesn't address the problems they actually have. So there's that as well. Before we get to the actual assignment part of this, I need questions. Who has any questions or any insights that are arising for you from this conversation? Questions or insight? What are you understanding from this? Jim Dessa, you're asking, we are going to show the prototype by creating it or just what the prototype is going to be theoretically? We'll talk about that shortly because that goes into today's assignment. Questions, guys. Questions or insights you're gaining? Desmond, you're here. What's standing out for you? Uh, I am here. Mm -hmm. um, well, I don't have a question, but maybe I was just thinking that uh, uh, the last point that we say that the, the process is completely iterative. Like, yeah. can we say that uh, uh, by it being iterative, someone can reach step three and then they realize, let me get back to step one. Or... Yes. Okay, okay. Yes. Because step three, uh, step three was the, yeah, absolutely. It's absolutely that. Step three was the ideation. Then you may realize that there's some piece of information you're not lacking or you're still working with assumptions. Then you just go back to step one or step two where you talk to the people or you just observe them and see what's up. You know, all those things are important. It's if you guys saw the first version of Facebook and the and the current version of Facebook, you see they did not just create a platform and sit pretty and like, oh my our work is done here. You've seen how it keeps on changing and changing and changing. Why? Because as they gain more information about their users and how the culture is changing and how the users' interests are changing and how things are developing, they keep on testing and testing and testing, okay? And a lot of times, you may start with a solution and it really is not working, okay? I don't know how it is in your countries, but some one of the le leading telcos companies in Kenya called Safaricom, they tried a number of things, like creating, we have mobile money that is renowned around the world called M-Pesa, okay? So what they tried to do is to create some sort of, it looks like a bank, like a credit card, okay? Like the bank cards, okay? So, but the bank card is attached to your M-Pesa mobile money. So you could just put it in a PDA, in a, in a PDQ machine and swipe it and things and it will take money from M-Pesa. But it didn't work. But the only way they would know it wouldn't work is to try and test it, okay? They may have talking, spoken to some initial users who may have felt like, oh, that would be nice, you know? But then nobody... You know, it either turned out to be quite a hassle for a lot of people to use it or whatnot, okay? They also tried to come up with, like, wristbands that you could just go do this at a pay point. When I say do this, I mean do this, you know, like, imagine this watch and just do this at a pay point, and it extracts money from it. It looked cute in theory, right? They were brilliant green, but people just didn't use it. 
and they were phased out. There could be a multiple number of reasons why people didn't use it. One, maybe there was a security issue involved, you know, like if someone steals your green card, your, your green wrist or pulls it out of you, you know, what are some of the challenges that are involved with that, for instance, you know, and just goes around paying things with it. There are some of the things, but the only way they could find out what something was and what doesn't is to test it, to test it, prototype, change things up, and if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But those are some, the only way to figure out how to grow is to test it. Put it, present it before the market, let them tell you. Let them tell you and watch how they respond to the thing that you presented to them. Okay? Good. Uh, Palsy, what am I missing? From this entire process, yeah. you, you, you did not miss anything. Your your was pretty good. Everything. Okay. Is there anything you'd like to add? Yeah. I just want to. Uh, mm -hmm. I just want to add something to everyone. Like when, like to us, they tell us when we think about design thinking. Let like you have first of all to think about empathy. It's mm -hmm. the main thing when we talk about empathy. You cannot solve someone problem if you, you if you are not in their shoes if you don't understand what they are really living what is the what is their life like every day so when you think about design thinking think about empathy that is the thing i just wanted to add absolutely absolutely thank you for sharing that i also want to get tiana's perspective because i know that she has had or gone through this before so that would be wonderful but i want to address before we talk to yatiana uh robert you said testing is expensive but not more than building the wrong product testing does not have to be expensive in fact the best tests are tests that are easy cheap and you can do and get insights immediately Okay, so I gave the mm -hmm. example of Safaricom because first of all, Safaricom has a lot of money. So for them, it doesn't matter how much they spend on it. Okay, they make billions of shillings perhaps in a day. So for them, their version of expensive is very different from what other companies would consider expensive. But I'll, I'll reiterate the example that I gave, you know, on what I was working on before when it comes to testing. For us, it just involved asking, you know, some of our very fast adopters to get on a video call with us for 15 to 20 minutes. See how they're interacting with the platform. Okay, you don't, they, you don't say anything, you just give them the link, see how they're and the writing notes. That's a version of testing. But an even better version of testing is being able to use analytics tools on the back end. Because analytics from Google Analytics to I think there's one called Mixergy, if I'm not wrong, there's a number of analytics tools on the back end. And these analytics tools could tell us a number of things. Which pages are people visiting more often? And this is something I'm sure you guys focus on when it comes to data. Which pages are people visiting? And if they click on this other page that we want them to visit, how long are they staying there? Are they interacting with the page? Are they reading the page in the first place? Or do they click on it and they click, nope, the hell out of there, okay? How many repeat people come onto the website, for example? These are some of the things that tell you whether or not your website, there's a lot of insight you can gain from such kind of data. And a lot of these platforms are actually free. These analytics platforms are actually free up to a certain point. So being able to get insight from things like that tells you, okay, it either looks like they're getting what they need immediately or they're not getting it at all. Or what we think, or what they think they'll get it, from this page is not what they were expecting so they nope out of there you know such something like that is what user testing is about okay and you guys are doing something around a b testing i think or a, a b synthesis if i'm not wrong but i may be wrong i'm going to take you guys so point is the a b thing helps you figure out so for us for example the thing that we were doing is which two which two pages are more likely to make people pay for what we're selling, okay? So when you're putting out adverts, for example, you lead to two different pages, okay? It's A-B testing. See, of both of those platforms, which one is bringing in more money than the other, okay? Apart from everything, the ad is the same, everything is the same, the, where the link is leading to is different. So if one page is converting more 
than the other, then it tells us information and insight about that. That is also a form of testing, okay? So I don't know if Robert, Robert, does that part make sense? About testing being able to be cheap? Robert? Okay, good. So now let's jump straight into our design thinking assignment, guys. This is supposed to be group work, okay? And we have linked the thing that you guys will be focusing on. The problem you guys will be focusing on is linked in is linked in the assignment document, okay? So we'll be focusing on the problem one of the organizations Comfed is trying to solve, okay? Which is underrepresentations of girls in high schools, especially in poor communities. So what your assignment will be is to be some causes of the problem of poor enrollment of girls in in school okay so one of the ways you can brainstorm causes of this problem read books about it or articles about it watch videos on YouTube observe the community around you if you come from a community where a number of girls are not in school and they should be observe it okay then write a list on one slide write the list of what you think the problem of poor enrollment of these girls is there is around okay just a list of what you think are the causes of this problem okay then i also want you to write a list of assumptions you're making about the problem all right exists the people facing it in this case the girls or the communities okay or the organizations working to solve it as some of the assumptions you're making like oh there's so many ngos and all they're doing is just eating money okay instead of solving the problem that could be an assumption okay it could be true it could be an assumption write it down okay if another assumption you're making is for example that if another assumption you're making is is something around these people value boys more than value girls write down that assumption okay it could be true it could be false but just write down the assumption okay so then after writing that list of assumptions Come up with a list of five to seven questions you can ask to find out more about the problem and the assumptions that you have made, okay? So one of the things you can do is, for example, if you live in a community that has a lot of street beggars, okay, maybe one day in town, stop one of the girls, say, hey, do you go to school? And they'll be like, yes or no. And if they say no, like, ask more about what the story is like, okay? You may find out that they dropped out of school and rebelled against their parents, and it's not necessarily because their parents did not want to take them to school. There are a lot of questions you can ask to find out more about the problem and the assumptions you've made about it, okay? Then the third step is where we talk about the whole reaching out to people, talking to your users. Reach out to two or three people. You, every group member, should try to reach out to two or three people facing the challenge or working to solve the problem. Ask them the questions you listed above, okay? So if you guys are in groups of three, we expect you guys to totally reach out to at least six, six to nine people in total. People either facing the challenge you're working on or people working to solve the problem, okay? Then ask them this list of questions. Then we want you to list insights you've gained from the conversation. What were you right about? What were you wrong about? Okay, so every, well, this is going to be done in group work. We expect every person to come up with a list of five to seven questions, okay? And to list personal insights they gained from the conversations, okay? From the two to three people they reached out with, reached out to, okay? So this is where you can work in group work, okay? Develop an initial solution to the problem based on the insights above so and make it clear why you've chosen this solutions okay one of the things you can do when you're working on this solution is create some sort of mind map if you realize that a lot of times you know maybe the girls you've spoken with are rebelling from home and it, maybe the parents aren't unable to afford it okay they may not be rich but maybe the parents can't take them to a free secondary school but they're not enrolled in school you know you could realize that maybe they their homes are just too harsh okay maybe they they come from very strict parenting and so one of the things you can do when you're mind mapping is figure out how can you 
include the parents in being a bit more understanding in the upbringing of and the way they bring up their children for example so one of the things you can do you can consider when coming up with a solution is to you could create a mind map an analysis tool a project prototype you can be as creative as you can and you and your group of and in, within your group of three come up with 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 potential solutions okay come with potential solutions it can be as creative as you can okay then this is the best part that is very important write a five point plan in a slide or two on how you would test the solution to see if it works okay who would you present the solution to okay what recession would you require if you had to actually test it how would you monitor it what would success look like okay so write a five point plan on how you would test the solution to see how it works so that's exactly what we're looking for i need you guys to ask questions and as you guys are preparing to ask questions yatiana if you're here what have i missed Yatiana, are you here? I don't know if she's here. Who has any? Okay, good. Okay, who has any questions regarding uh, this presentation of the assignment itself? Questions? Questions? So, have we all understood? That means yes. If there is no question, that means we understand very well. Okay. We tell you what, is, what, do, do, what do they think about design thinking? Now they have got something about it. Okay. I don't know, choose randomly someone. Okay. Uh, I'm going to choose Tashi. Tashi, are you here? Oh, yeah, Tiana, go on. Hi, Cindy. Um, this was very insightful, and I'm sure they understand. Probably they are not sure what questions to ask right now. So um, I have a question for them, okay? So from the assignment, it says the second to last point, it tells you to develop an initial solution to the problem based on the insights above okay so make it clear why you have chosen this solution it could be a mind map a data collection analysis a tool a project prototype be as creative as you can i think that's a great point for everyone to just give us an idea on what they think would be feasible for them to do right now because you have this design thinking you have the technical assignments you have the tutoring so i think this is a good point for us to just discuss what is okay for us to do right now on what can we base our answers on like how are we going to do it? Because right now it seems, oh yeah, this is easy. This is something I can do in two hours. Trust me, you can So, If you have any questions about the exact solution that you're actually going to come up with and include in your answer, this is the right time to ask about it. Okay, so exactly, Milky. So I knew you guys would have questions about this. So Cindy, you, you have one question now on um, what exactly a mind map is. Cindy, Paul, C, do you want to answer what a mind yes. map is? Yes. <laughs> uh, let me give you an example of what a mind map is. And I'm just going to search for it here and now. And uh, you should be able to see it shortly. Give me one second. I'm going to search for it. But in the interim, Palsy, do you have anything you'd like to say or add? I'm going to give you a, a rand, an actual clear example of what a mind map is. Uh -huh. Any other question? As I'm looking for a physical representation of mind map. So guys, uh, let me show you what a mind map actually looks like. Uh, 
I'll just share my screen, okay? Share screen. I'm going to stop. Then I'm going to share this new screen. Uh, tab. So uh, this is an example of a mind map, okay? Uh, guys, I use a, a platform called Canva to create all my designs and my presentations. For some reason, Google Slides just doesn't inspire me <laughs> as much as Canva does, but it's loading. I don't know why my internet is on the slow side today, but a mind map is okay, good. So. A mind map is something that allows you to analyze your thoughts, okay, or put your thoughts on paper, okay? So, for example, if you want to create a website, okay, you will start right here. So, let's say you want to create a website that links girls to scholarships, for example, okay? For example. So, here you'd like... Uh, Fem scholarships. This is what you'll call a very lame name to call a website like that. But for example, okay, what will the back end look like? Okay, and you'll put the information that you will need on the back end. So, for example, if you see a database of girls, you know, okay, where you'll host it and blah blah blah, and all that content. Then the front end, this is where you'll blah 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 blah. Okay, then when it comes to designing, this is how you will handle the design of the website. Just ideas. It's like putting out your ideas. In a way that helps anyone who looks at it, people can say, Oh, so this is what you want the back end, this is what you want to, this is blah blah. So, this is what I'm say, like mapping your thoughts. Actually, I was supposed to be sharing this, share this up instead. Yeah, so this, okay, can you see this? Tab better, yeah. Website back end, it's like writing down your ideas or strategy for how you will handle the different aspects of your solution in a way that's organized and easy to follow. Okay, yes, there is a free version of Canva. Is that a bit clearer, Milky? Mind maps can look very different. Okay, this is just one example. Milky, is that easy to understand for you now? Let me know. Any other questions, guys? I think it will be difficult to come up with a practical solution, a prototype or solution for such a practical problem. For example, if you think that the, it's the hash parents. Yeah, if that's Robert, yes. If you find it's a hash parents, the prototype will think of is a crash counseling class on parenting in the community, will that be right? Perhaps, yeah, but there are a lot of other ways to look at a solution like that, okay? Could it be a series of radio and TV ads, for example, that talk about that? Could it be a variety of TV shows, for example, that showcase ETC, ETC? There are a number of ways to, to go around that, okay? So this is where creativity comes from. Okay, is mind map like a very simple version of a user journey map for an app? Perhaps I think a user journey map can in use mind mapping, not the other way around, but yeah. Uh huh. There are also cool apps that can do mind maps. You can search on Play and App Store. Yes. Any other questions, guys? I want you guys to know that mind mapping isn't the only potential way you guys can solve this, you know. If you can come up with a digital solution as well that can track enrollments of girls in poorer communities, blah, 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 using data collected from X into Y, and this data is something that can inform governments on the kind of interventions that they could put in place for something like this, using the right kind of insight, that could also be massively helpful. So there isn't one way of solving this, and that is why we are asking you to put in the effort and energy. Talk to the right stakeholders, either the girls or the parents or organizations are working with this. 
you can read their websites reach out to people who run them or project managers on linkedin there are myriad of ways you can approach the stakeholder engagement but stakeholder engagement is a very critical part of this process if you don't talk to the users or people who are playing in that space you versus your time it's one of the most important parts of this process empathy and a huge part of empathy is having conversations conversations observation e to see any questions guys we are almost out of time any questions isn't it hard for us to find people who are facing these problems i don't know is it i want you guys to be creative when it comes to how you are approaching this okay if you're in the city you can talk to homeless women unless you live in heaven or in the scandinavian countries I don't think it's hard to get homeless women in your city, Milky. A huge part of this is being able to talk to the people you're designing for. If you're unable to talk to them, then you cannot design for them. Christian, go on. Yes, uh, morning, CD. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? Okay, I'm fine also. Uh, I would like to, to, it's not a question, but I think it would be better if we can have another meeting about that. Maybe, I don't know, next week, something like that on morning, mm -hmm. in order to add us to more, see, uh, to doing things well, I think something like that, so. Okay. So what we can do is we can have an informal session next week on Monday after the stand-up, okay? To just go through this, and what you've been able to do so far and everything next week on monday or tuesday you can definitely do that okay thank you okay. great yes thank you okay great. but by then i want you guys to have at least done something okay at least done something i, I don't want us to make this something that we repeat a whole other tutorial again we've done something <laughs> mid step so that you're coming with practical questions yeah okay, yeah. okay. thank you christian stashi go on okay uh my question is mm -hmm. so what if when you're trying to to empathize yeah. you find that uh, the problem is actually there, there's actually no problem so for example what if uh, they're not going to school because they've found another another option to replace going to school mm -hmm. then what happens uh that's exactly why that step is important that's exactly why that step is important. It gives you insight. So if you feel, if you find out there's no problem that exists, then that's good, okay? But you don't talk to one person, you talk to a number of people, okay? So if you find that, then that's good. You find, you get the insight that you need. The same way Safaricom realized that people don't need to be tapping away their M-Pesa, they're okay with actually just dialing the stuff in, they realize the problem doesn't exist and they discontinued the thing. It doesn't exist enough for people to engage with it, you know? So that's it. That's exactly why the problem is, uh, the, the step is important. You want to build something people want, okay? Uh, Chimdea said the deadline is next week on Friday for this assignment. Anyone else before we call it a meeting? Are we good? Okay. Uh, silence means that we are good, guys. Share the slides. I will. Isn't our data small to generalize? If you want to ask more people, please ask more people. But the main reason why, you know, we've included the thing about research and everything else is that so that you can be able to get as many, as much perspective as you can. And also the main reason why we ask you to do this in groups is that so that you and your other group members can share the data that you gather from this. Okay, so. Yati's slide. Yati, you have a slide? Barakat, what do you mean by Yati's slide? I think he's talking about the problem anticipation slide. So I'll also try to share it on the, the Okay. Yeah. Oh, I forgot okay. the word, yeah. Okay. Yeti, I'll send you this, then you can send both of them together. Okay? Okay. Okay. 
Okay, guys, I will take silence as we are good and I will end this session. Do not forget we have, if you face problems, you guys know you can find me on Rocket Chat. Obviously, I always answer all my DMs or my email. Okay. So, okay. Guys, do not forget our session. If you